Good, good morning. We are going to get started with our media availabilities in advance of Sunday's AAA Texas 500 here at Texas Motor Speedway. And we are starting off with Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver of the number 88 <coughs> Nationwide Justice League Chevrolet. Uh, Dale, you've been participating in the Junior Nation Appreciation Tour over the last several races. It's actually going to continue after the season ends when we head to Las Vegas, where you'll be hosting Appreciation, an evening with Dale Earnhardt Jr. presented by Nationwide. Pretty special event for you, an opportunity to get together with your friends and family and um, the fans to come together to celebrate your career. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that event? Yeah, we, um, let's see here, Mike Davis sent me an email with some talking points. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I get it right because he's pretty, he's pretty hardcore. Um, basically, uh, we thought about what kind of event we could put together for uh, some sort of a final hurrah or, or, or something we could do that in included the fans around um, the banquet week. And so we had a lot of ideas come up and uh, keep things that were important to me were that it was for the fans and that um, myself or NASCAR or anybody for that matter didn't profit off of it that we would um, use all the proceeds to go to the Nationwide Children's Hospital so we got NASCAR to sign off on all those things and we went forward with uh, creating an event where me and Mike Davis will be the hosts of the event and I have no idea what really is going to happen and who the guests are. So I didn't want to know what, it, what, what was going on or what, what Mike planned or who would be there. I, I imagine that he's going to bring up some folks that, I've, that are part of, my, part of my family, part of my life, part of my past racing history. So it should be a lot of fun. And um, tickets are on sale now at NASCAR.com. I'm going to post the link because I think the link's a little tricky to find on NASCAR.com. But I'm going to post the link on my social platforms. Um, right now, there are 246 tickets left. So um, I'm excited about that. This is exact. I mean, if I'm going to do something like this, this is exactly how I'd like it to go as far as... Um, something the fans can enjoy and it's strictly for them and it benefits a great cause. It goes right along with the, with the, with the bullet points that we've talked about all year for this uh, appreciation tour and um, should be a lot of fun. So it's going to be a big surprise for, uh, for me and for the fans and, and I think that'll keep it really entertaining. And uh, Mike's, you know Mike, he's got a great personality, very creative. So I'm certain that he's going to keep the hits coming. Um, so I'm excited, you know, to, to, to get there and, and, and be a part of that program. And uh, we thought about getting a host for it, but we figured, why don't we just host it ourselves? What could go wrong? <laughs> All right, we're going to open it up to questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start here with Chris. ChrisMikeHeadsFans.com, Dale, this morning I woke up and I saw the video of the fan uh, last weekend at Martinsville that was literally crying when he got to meet you. I was just wondering if you could walk us through the experience and what that was like and what you said to him. My, uh, Tyler, where's Tyler Overstreet? Is he in here? Tyler, where did we meet him at? We met him there in the spring. That's right. So we met him at the spring race. Uh, was it, out, it was outside the track or something? But we got so we talked. We told him to come back to this race. We'd get him hot passes. Um, so when I saw him in the garage, uh, he was just a guest of ours uh, for the weekend. Um, but every but the reason why we had such a, I guess a, you know such an intimate interaction is is because every time I see him, he's cry he cries. And I'm trying to tell him there at that moment that the, na the racetrack's a happy place. We're going to have a lot of fun. This car, you know, we're going to work on this car and uh, try to get our car fast. And that um, he was there for the whole weekend and to enjoy it and make sure that he has fun. Um, 
we saw him every day and after the race we saw him and signed some gloves I signed the gloves that we used and gave them to him uh, right after we got out of the car I said meet me at the car I'm gonna park it on pit road with all the other cars I'll see you at the pit wall he had a gift for me and Amy and so we swapped gifts his mom he lost his mom to an illness just recently so he's just you know having a hard time with that and so you know just uh seemed like uh he seems like a great kid just wanted to in you know have him have him out to the race and give him a really great experience and get him as close to the car and the team as we could and he had a lot of fun he stood he's stood there with us for the anthem and um enjoyed pre-race with us and got to be involved in all that and see what was going on so it was uh it's a neat deal we'll go to bob and then to holly Bob Packers, ESPN, you seemed so excited after Martinsville just because of the way that race was. Uh, is that maybe one of the things that you'll miss the most? And was there any part of you during that race like, man, I can't give this up? <laughs> um, Martinsville, um, I just love, uh, you know, I said, I feel like I just repeat myself over and over, but you, yeah. You know, to answer your question, short track racing to me is um, it's uh, something we don't get to do a lot. So even as you're racing through the season, you miss it and want to do it. So you get excited when you get the chance to go to Bristol or Martinsville. When those come up on the schedule, I, I get really excited about being able to race in close quarters and and. Um, that those tracks to me have such a strong length to the history of the sport and to my memories and and of uh you know being around in the 80s and 90s uh what you know a lot of, we had a lot more short tracks on the schedule back then and it seemed like you know we were going to places like that all the time and seeing action like that more on the regular and um, I couldn't, it had been so long since I've gotten out of a race car and heard the crowd go through so many different emotions for 20, 30 minutes after a race. I mean, it was just incredible to be a witness to that and to feel that energy of the crowd so plugged in to what was happening around the racetrack. And, and as you were seeing the drivers pop up on the big screen, the fans would react and man, it just been, I can't even remember the last time I've seen any, or, you know, seen anything like that or witnessed anything like that, but we've seen it before, but boy, it's been a while. It was really a magical moment. I thought for, for anybody that's, that likes racing, you know, it was a really cool. I know there were some people there that were disappointed and not having the best time, but um, you know, as far as you know, as far as people being plugged into the to what's going on and excited about what's going on and you know, enamored with what's happening on the racetrack and and so forth, that was as good as it gets. Martinsville just seems to always be a place where you can count on having a fun race. You can count on seeing a great finish you can count on being entertained the entire time and um for you know for being such a small venue and and having so much history i think they do such a great job with it so just uh can't you know i, I can't say enough good things about about that track I, I didn't have any moment during the race where i was thinking hmm, man i wish i could untie this knot but um that that you know when, when people when i think man wonder what about racing and driving cars i'll miss i know i'll miss people i know i'll miss my team um, but when i think about driving cars what i'm going to miss the most martinsville what you get out of a race at martinsville you can get it at other places too but what you get there man is so fun and so enjoyable and it's dependable it's there every time you go we'll go to holly and then wolfgang over to your left, it would be. Way left. Hey, uh, Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Uh, along these same lines, and I know you're asked about it nearly every week about your memories, your thoughts of the track, but certainly this has been a special place to you in your career. If you could talk about um, 
getting that win here that you did, and I was actually here for it. So I'm so. <laughs> but just talk about that and, and what this place means to you. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think, I didn't know coming into Texas that this place would become so special to me. Um, we had a tire rub and a couple other things go on in that Xfinity race that surprised me uh, that we won. We were able to, came back to come back to win and, and get through the field. Nemechek was hard to beat pretty much every week. Um, a couple other guys, but so I was really proud, uh, really proud of that win. And then to come back and get your first cup win at the same track, I think that that shows right there how much com confidence really matters. Confidence is um, is a is an emotion almost, or a, you know, it's just more of a feeling than anything. But it can affect performance and choices you make. Um, if your confidence is low, you make different choices. You think differently and you race differently. So certainly having that win in the Xfinity Series, uh, I think had everything to do or a lot to do with us coming back and winning in the Cup Series at the same track for the first time. Um, it did amazing things for my career. You know, we, we, we had uh, won a lot of races in the Xfinity Series but I, I thought, you know, man, we're, you know, Cup Series is a whole nother level. These are the pros. How, how I'm going to fit in there and get a win with all these guys doing so good. So many, so many talented drivers and teams. Was our team capable of beating any of these guys? You know, we had a lot of, we had to sort of come in and, and, and grow and improve. We couldn't win just as an Xfinity team. We had to grow into that Cup atmosphere and I was surprised myself that we won so soon and it really did a lot for our career. We had went to the National Sales Convention or the big you know, yearly meeting that Budweiser has and stood on stage and told them that we, you know, they hadn't won a race in a while and we were gonna get them back to victory lane. And to come out there to, find, to kind of deliver on that was uh, a bit of a relief. And you know, we kind of started rolling into you know, winning at Richmond and going to the All-Star Race and winning, um, you know, that really was a great short couple of months for us. But, um, I, you know, I don't know. The Texas has been so awesome to me. You know, my wife, Amy, she's from Texas, and I've got a, um, a whole nother family down here uh, that's, a, that's a big, big bonus of, of being married to her. Um, we spent all weekend with them, or all week, with her sister and, and her husband. So, yeah, Texas is a, something that, Texas is a place that's almost like a second home. You know, I, I, um, I find I love more and more about it the more, more time I spend here. Um, but the track, you know, just, uh, it, you know, there's nothing really unique about the place other than that, you know, Eddie's been amazing as far as a promoter. You know, the things that he's, he does, he, he's always on the, you know, he's always kind of pushing the envelope. Um, and he means well, I've learned. Um, sometimes I've wondered, but um, I know what his, I know he's just trying to do a job and take advantage of his opportunities and he, he has to deliver. And so he does what he needs to do to deliver. And, it reminds me of some of the some of the older style promoters that we used to have, a lot more flamboyant and creative. Um, so some of the a lot of the stuff that he does is actually fun fun to fun to see. But um, so he he his 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 style of promotion all brings a certain personality to the track and gives the track and it, it, a bit of a personality that that I think differs from a lot of other places too, which I I enjoy. I think that. I think that having Eddie here and the job that he does, as hard as it is to admit, um, he he does a really good job and and has everything to do with where this place is today. We'll go to Wolfgang and wrap up with Lee. Uh, I go over here. Well, actually, I have two questions. So, French but French Germany. Uh, number one, your retirement situation. Is it just solely NASCAR, or maybe we can see you in a different kind of championship or series, maybe endurance racing? The second question, a couple of years ago, together with your wife, you made a trip to Germany. 
in case you get an invitation from a promoter or team to have a guest experience in a German race, will you accept to come over? I, I would definitely accept the opportunity to come to another uh, discipline of motorsport as a guest. That would be, I've never been to a Formula One race. I think that I would love to witness one of those at some point in my life. Been having devoted a lot of my life to motorsports, I think that I'd, it's something you have to check that you have to check that box, you know. And 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 I think there's other other series and forms of motorsports that I have equal uh, interest in uh, observing. Uh, so that would be awesome. And and if, I'm sure those opportunities will will present themselves. I think. Um, as far as driving, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to have a couple of Xfinity races next year, and, and that might go on for a few years as long as it helps our, our company. Um, I, I think I'll have a bit of an itch to scratch, so I'm not, I'm not complaining about the opportunity to run an Xfinity series uh, a couple times a year. I think it'll be a lot of fun, to be honest with you. And I'm sure that I don't, I'm sure I'm unaware today just how much of an urge I'll have to get into a car and go compete when I have those opportunities on the Xfinity series next year. We have some late model cars that we've had on the, we've owned a late model team since 2000, as far as I can remember, maybe even further back than that. Um, I, th I think that it would really be a lot of fun to slip into Hickory one night just for a regular show. Um, whether that'll happen or not, I never, I don't really know, but it's fun to think about another whole thing to do. But uh, outside of that, I don't think I'll be at the 24 hours of Daytona or anything like that. It's, it's not a, back when I, back when we did those things, it felt like, it, it felt easier to do those one-offs. But that series is so competitive today, it's, you just don't come in there as a hobby Oh, you know, I'm just going to come in here and, and, and have a little fun. I mean, it's just too competitive. And those guys, you know, that series has grown to be some, become, uh, it, you know, it'd be like one of them trying to come over here and just, you know, flirting with NASCAR a little bit. I don't, you know, I don't know that I could have the success I would want to have or have the opportunity to be in the equipment that I would want to be in. And uh, I mean, as far as working with a 24-hour, uh, working with it, working to run a 24-hour race, you want to do it with people that you know. That I've, I drove for uh, Corvette and, and the Crawford. Uh, that was really nerve-wracking because you have teammates that I don't really know that well, and I'm responsible for the car when I'm in it. And man, I don't want to be the guy that screws this up for everybody. And it's a completely completely different experience. So if I were to run into 24 hours again, it would have to be with, you know, guys, you know, drivers that I'm friends with. And I just don't know whether that would materialize. It's a fairly unlikely. It was a very, very fun race, my kind of race. I mean, staying up all night long, um, not getting any sleep for 24 hours. That's right up my alley. Um, so I felt like I had an advantage, but, uh, it's just such a cool atmosphere too in the middle of the night with the cars running around. Maybe it's just a race I'll go have fun as a spectator at because um, I know it's a lot of fun to be there during that event. And watching it on TV all night long at home is a lot of fun. I can't imagine just being there as a as a fan. But I don't really know that I'll drive as drive you know drive too much other than uh, you know the Xfinity stuff. We'll wrap up with Lee. LeeSpencerMotorsport.com. It, it was clear on Sunday night, as you mentioned earlier, about um, the fan reaction, and particularly the fan reaction to Chase Elliott. And, um, you know, there's been talk, who will be your successor? And I think that even through good times and bad, what has kept you um, at the top of the popularity chart with the fans has been your ability to be genuine. Good times, bad. We, we see what we get. If you had to give advice to these young drivers or to any driver or any athlete coming in the sport, would that ability to remain genuine, would that be the key thing that you would suggest to them as far as gaining fan approval? Well, 
I, you know, it's hard for me to give those guys advice. When I was that age, I wasn't open to listening to any, you know, body tell me uh, how to be, and especially outside the car. You know, I, 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 at that age, and I'm sure those guys are the same way. They think they, they got it tuned. You know, they're tuned up. They're ready. They don't need really any help. Um, you know, those, and and I guess you know a lot. What I see, a lot of what I see from guys, I like. I don't think they need any advice. With um, like Kyle Larson, I think he's awesome outside the car. Super, you know, he just he's cool as a cucumber and and engaging on social media. Has a great sense of humor. People like to see the human side of you and that that sense of humor and 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 some of your personal life and they like to see that you're real. You know, you're you're just like they are. That's what they want to know. And they relate to people that might they they can imagine you living right next door or, or run into your grocery store and and I think that a lot of these guys are a lot are, that's who they are and that 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 comes across well in their social media interaction and so I don't know that I I don't see you know I don't I don't know that I could really give them any advice that they would either take or that would either help them but um, I think Chase I'm with you I think Chase has a has a uh, a real opportunity uh, to seize, or to not to seize, but maybe to really grow uh, his fan base quickly over the next several years, especially once he starts to eventually get into victory lane, which we all know he's going to. Um, knowing him and being around him, he's genuine. He tells it like it is. He he's hard on himself, critical on himself, but that sometimes to a you know too much but that lets you know that he's not he's not going to hold back his feelings about whether it's himself someone else or what's happening so i think he's going to be a guy that's going to deliver uh when it comes to being genuine and 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 open to conversation and discussion and not really you know close himself off from the media and so forth so i'm excited uh, about all these guys of uh, alex and and william and it's just uh, Blaney is just so, you know, so much fun outside the car just to observe and watch. You know, we we all kind of enjoy seeing what he's up to. He's doing something every week. It seems like he's such a um, he's he's the guy that I think is taking the lead, and a lot of these guys could 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 follow as far as how he, you know, self promotes and and engages with the fans. Does such a good job with it, and he's really not he's up for anything and. I think that, that that's a great example if, if, um, if those guys want to look for somebody uh, to follow. All right, Dale. Well, at this time, we're going to turn it over to Texas Motor Speedway, who has a special surprise for you. All righty. I see a horse. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, uh, you were concerned that, uh, I don't know why, um, but, <laughs> whoa, 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 SJP, whoa, whoa, back it up, back it up, come on. Uh, SJP is named my horse. Yep. Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay. Um, Y'all didn't get that, huh? Okay. Um, <laughs> did you get that? I did. Okay. Yeah. I figured you would. So um, you were up. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> okay. Let me put this thing in reverse. Um, I got a couple things for you. Okay. Uh, if I can, if I can get the horse to back up or <laughs> come on. Uh, uh, how about a little hand here, Brian? 
Um, all right, so you, you, you were concerned. You said the good news is you only got to come to Texas once. Um, I only need one. Yeah. So, uh, why don't you come stand around here if you would for a minute? I'm a little oh, nervous oh, too. Oh, oh. Is it is it the horse or is it it's me? It's the horse. Actually. Okay. Why don't you stand right here? All right. Um, we, we're doing something to honor you, but mostly the Junior Nation, um, because we we have been blessed by great support from the Junior Nation, and so I want to ask. Um, Stephanie Meichert to join us up here, Stephanie, and she's going to tell you, you can stand perfect right there. He's all not right, going to bite all you. Right, all right. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You, you into horses? Yeah. I mean, I like animals. Okay. Yeah. I, you got some at home, yeah, I know, but you have any horses at home? I don't. Okay. Well, Stephanie's going to tell you about this. All right. I'm Dale. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured that. All right. <laughs> Well, we're a Victory Therapy Center, and we're a therapeutic horse ranch that serves people with disabilities, veterans, and first responders. We're literally less than five miles down the road, and we actually have a horse named Chevy, and his, um, his well, I guess his uh, track name, I guess I could call it, would be a three-quarter ton. <laughs> so um, we're actually going to name it in your honor. Oh. So um, it's being sponsored. Uh, with your name on it, and uh, I do have a fun photo if you want to sure. see with, uh, what see, he looks like. Very big horse. <laughs> very big horse. Twelve-year-old yeah, Mel Percheron <laughs> thoroughbred mix. <laughs> very good. And Texas Motor Speedway. This has 88 on the side. <laughs> Texas Motor Speedway is going to sponsor the horse at uh, the the Victory uh, uh, Therapy, Therapy Center, Center in Roanoke uh, to salute the Junior Nation. Very and cool. So uh, that way, there's a lasting um, uh, Dell Junior Junior Nation. Uh, here in the community, so that's uh, that's the big news. So awesome. thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. much. Thanks for Pleasure letting me. Thanks, thanks for meeting you. But that's not all. <laughs> but wait, there's more. So um, we got this over here, Ziz. Where are we at? Okay, they're going to wheel this in over here, and um, going to have you uh, go over and pull the cover off of that. Okay. So, you look nervous. I am a little nervous. <laughs> look, man, you, you got your show, I got mine, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, let them uh, hook goodness. this up, and I want you to go pull the cover off. Okay. Work. And I'll tell you what this is. Can you pull the cover off? This is from the scoreboard, position number one, lit up oh, the Oh, man. From the 2000 Direct TV 500, the first your first win in uh, NASCAR competition. Whoa, 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 back up. So uh, that's for you to take back to the shop and. Uh, <laughs> Holy and, cow! And want you to have the scoreboard of your first win. That's it. So I that's that, the one. That is the one. That is the one. And that's so, something. Uh, it came off the scoring tower. We used to have another one yeah. down here, and it came off that scoring tower. So that's well, it. Well, that's something else. So we're trying to think of something unique and special. So. Uh, what's unique and special about us, and besides a lot of things we probably don't need to talk about, uh, is is that scoreboard in your first win. Yes, sir. So, so one well, thank happen. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you it. You bet. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Say thank you. Thank you. But wait, there's more. <laughs> um, I'm going to, is Amy in here? Amy is here. Amy, could you join us for just a second? Oh, okay, she's over here. Why don't you just have her bring this on in for us? Uh, this is a little gift for you and Amy and for the little one to be. Okay. Uh, a, uh, we had this built uh, <laughs> by Tot Rods, Eddie Serrano. Eddie, where are you at? Right, here. right there. Eddie yeah. built this in seven days. Wow. A little stroller uh, for uh, the new little Earnhardt. That's uh, pretty cool. And, and there's some Texas Motor Speedway uh, onesies and stuff like that in the bag. But pull the bag out and you can see the, the, the work that Eddie and his bunch have done. You, you can just pull the bag out of the car. There you go. Very nice. And uh, so that's not a, that, that's just a, a, an early wedding shower gift. So, Very nice. Thank you. Well, well, thank you. Congratulations, Amy. You're a smart man because you married a Texas girl. Yes. And uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I don't drive Sarah Jessica Parker often, but uh, um, so with all the integrity and the seriousness that a man sitting on a horse inside a building lit up <laughs> can offer, I want to thank you, I want to congratulate you, what you've meant to this sport, what you've done for this sport, just by being you, um, 
There have been times where you have scratched your head about me, I know. Uh, that was not one of those times. Well, I hope not. Thank you, Amy. Um, it, you, you mean so much to the sport and appreciate how you've conducted yourself and, and the things you've done on and off the racetrack and um, look forward to seeing you. Uh, you're going to get to know me like these people do yeah, exactly. now as a media member, and, um, and we'll have some fun, but, uh, but God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Eddie. So, yeah. uh, still scared? Not anymore. No, I think it's over, right? <laughs> well, you, you want to get on Sarah Jessica Park? I'm with the all right. Pictures? No, I'm you okay. Sure? Yeah, I'm real sure. <laughs> I drive her to work every day. Yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, well, I got you a shirt over here to put on and a hat for pictures, so we'll light you up. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank man. you. Wish you the best. Yes, sir. Uh, love to give you another trophy. Sunday. I, I got one in Victor home. Lane with the cowboy hat this time and six shooters. Six shooters, which I never shot, so I'm ready. Do, do you want to tell them about the first trophy? Um, I'm trying to think. Was there something? Okay, so the city of Fort Worth produced the first trophies, and it was modeled after the uh, trophy that uh, the uh, Fort Worth Stock Show was giving away for their 100th anniversary. Whoop, 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 whoop. And so we didn't see, whoa, whoa. You You're gotta, scared, aren't you? You need to get more aggressive with that thing. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so they made the trophies, and we didn't see them until two days before the race. So we needed a perpetual trophy, and then we needed individual trophies. So the perpetual trophy is about this big, and it's a beautiful silver cup. Unfortunately, the individual trophies are about this big. And so Dale wins his first race. He's excited, as he should be. And I was embarrassed by the little trophies, so we presented him the perpetual trophy for the photographs of Victory Lane. And then when it's over, I grab him by the sleeve and take him over to the corner and go, I didn't have that. And this one's yours. And so his first trophy is about this big at home. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyhow, yeah. sorry about that. No, hey, the second one was much better. Yeah, yeah. well, there's a third one up here that right. uh, you, can, you can take home Sunday if you want. Sounds so. like a good deal. All right. Cool deal. We're all, right. all done. What would y'all like from us?